of World Crisis Radio. This is the first edition of our program now being uh, recorded here in the new year, and we're back to our usual schedule. We're taping today on Friday, January 8th. Um, this week, I believe, will be recorded in retrospect um, in many ways, the past two-week period, including the Christmas and New Year's holiday. The weeks when Wall Street went berserk. Wall Street goes to the politics of the berserk, the berserkers of Wall Street. Uh, it is a truism in any serious analysis, of course, that in the Anglo-American London, New York, Washington model of civilization, the ruling class are the bankers, the finance oligarchs, the financiers, the hedge fund hyenas, the derivatives merchants, and so forth. They control the government. They are the enemy. Anybody who says that government is the main enemy is uh, confused, to put it mildly. The principal problems of government are due to the fact that Wall Street owns it, lock, stock, and barrel. The main objection to the Federal Reserve is that it's a tentacle of Wall Street, and certainly not the other way around, as I will show with a historical sketch a little bit later in the program. But all of a sudden now, uh, we've had the Christmas patsy, Mutalab, uh, the Nigerian, uh, the Christmas patsy appears in the skies over Detroit. More indications that he's a mental deficient, a retard, if we must, but there it is, uh, in the long line of retards, reaching back to the retarded, uh, mentally disturbed uh, wretch Richard Reed, who was sleeping on the floor of Finsbury Mosque, I guess it was, back in 2001. But on the basis of this incident, we've now got a new axis of evil, and that is a that is now the Obama axis of evil. That is uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, number one, seen as one thing, which, of course, it's not. But from their point of view, it is one theater of war, we might say. Then Somalia, and then Yemen, Yemen of all places, which is now being targeted. Yemen has somehow become Kaput Mundi, the strategic hinge of the universe. And there are reasons for this, of course. The general underlying denominator of this policy is that it's an anti-Chinese policy. Yes, you heard it. Anti-Chinese. That's the secret. Uh, Al-Qaeda, this uh, collection of fanatics, psychotics, patsies, dupes, double agents, and whatever, is, of course, deployed as a secret army of the CIA. It is the Arab and Islamic legion of the CIA, and it is used to target countries that the U.S. wants to attack for geopolitical, geostrategic reasons. And the common denominator of just about all of this stuff is anti-Chinese, and of course anti-Russian, uh, anti-Shanghai cooperation organization, I guess we can say, in many ways. So we've got the Anglo-American finance oligarchs looking at their banking system and contemplating how bankrupt it is from Northern Rock Royal Bank of Scotland, Lloyds Bank, and the rest of the bankrupt city of London, looking across to Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo, and the rest of them uh, equally bankrupt, living, as it were, on constant transfusions of public money, if not from the U.S. Treasury through the TARP, then, of course, behind the scenes, from the Bernanke Fed. Uh, and they're looking at the imminent possibility of some kind of catastrophic dollar crisis. Now, this Anglo-American oligarchical beast, because that's the only term for it, has a limited array of uh, responses. And generally what they try to do, as we've seen in 1914 and as we've seen repeatedly since, when they are faced with a financial breakdown crisis, they attempt to respond through military and geopolitical means. Uh, the problem is that the entire Anglo-American system is now so degenerate, so decadent, so bankrupt, so deindustrialized, so impotent in many critical ways, that it's getting to be a little bit hard to see how this is going to work. But be that as it may, they are going to the attack. Uh, essentially, the month of December, Obama's speech at West Point at the beginning of the month, an open declaration of war on Pakistan, a country of 160 million people with nuclear weapons. And then adding in, as the month went on, Yemen, this based on the uh, the, the question of uh, Al-Laki, the CIA lackey, 
having uh, helped the Detroit Flying Patsy of Christmas Day. This, of course, has to do with the coast of Africa. It has to do with the exit from the Suez Canal. Uh, critical question, because all of Chinese exports to Europe, uh, if they want to save money, better go through the Suez Canal, and similarly the other way. And, of course, as I repeatedly stated, uh, starting two years ago uh, this past week, when I first put out my warnings about Obama, Africa is a critical battlefield between the uh, U.S., British oligarchs and China. The Chinese have been moving massively into China, into, into Africa. Chinese moving massively into Africa. And that, of course, is the, one of the most obvious is the Chinese presence in oil-rich Sudan, but also in mineral-rich rich Zimbabwe, uh, making development deals, giving them a decent break, 50-50 development deals rather than the uh, imperialist 70-30 uh, or 80-20 or whatever it is London is offering right now. And the idea there being that the U.S. and the British feel, they fear quite correctly, that if there's any other game in town other than the London, New York, Washington uh, constant meddling in internal affairs, destabilizations under human rights cover, that a lot of people in Africa are going to say, we're going to go with the Chinese. And indeed, one of the reasons Pakistan is being targeted, if you had that famous pipeline from Iran across Pakistan into China, oil would flow from Iran across Pakistan into China, and Chinese economic influence would flow back along the pipeline into Iran, into Iraq, into Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the Emirates, Syria, and all the rest. Uh, the goal here, of course, being world domination. The Anglo-Americans are convinced that their ability to control the Middle East for geostrategic reasons, including, of course, the oil spigot, but not limited to that by any manner of means, that this is critical to the future of the Anglo-American world empire. Africa is a key aspect of that. That is why Mugabe is targeted in Zimbabwe. That is why General Bashir is targeted in Sudan. That's why we now have EQAP, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen. We've got this uh, Al-Qaeda uh, clone group uh, over there in Somalia, and we've got Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb in Algeria, in Morocco, in Tunisia, in places like this. Uh, all of this a big geopolitical offensive by the Anglo-Americans. And the goal now of our program today is to, is to uh, essentially catch up with a very interesting week. Now, we, I said I put out a, uh, a release uh, on January 7, 2008, the day before the New Hampshire primary. This was the day Hillary cried, if you remember that day. Uh, between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I issued my first leaflet that was sent up to New Hampshire, where a number of people distributed it that, that day, that very day, warning that Obama was a warmonger, that Obama meant World War III, that Obama was assembling a confrontation cabinet, and that one should not listen to the mellifluous rhetoric, but look at the warmonger intent. That was two years ago this past week, back in a minute.